Now, back to the uh, warning today from the Treasury Secretary that some of these massive job losses are now permanent. Forget this stupid talk of bouncing back on the other side. The critical issue now, critical, is not, you know, just to let us go back playing sport or going back to the beach. It is how to get back to work as fast as possible, to try to pay back the hundreds of billions of dollars we're losing because of this mess. Now, one small good sign, small, Environment Minister Susan Lee is getting a, her department to speed up environmental approvals for major projects, but, gee, we need a lot more. Joining me is Nationals MP Matt Canavan. The former Resources Minister has been demanding cuts to the green tape that held up projects like the Adani coal mine for years, eight years, I believe it was. Matt Canavan, thank you so much indeed for your time. Cutting back uh, green tape, uh, look, easy to say, I guess, but what actually needs to be done? Are you confident it will be done? Well, Andrew, we need an overhaul. Uh, we need a complete change in mindset about how we approach uh, major projects in this country. Uh, as you've described, uh, too many uh, large projects have been held up for too long. Uh, uh, I, I had a look of, at, at eight major projects uh, about a month ago when this, uh, this virus uh, started. The average held up time was over a thousand days uh, uh, for these uh, projects, so almost uh, three years. Uh, they could create uh, $60 billion in wealth and, and economic opportunity and thousands of jobs, but they're just held up, held up waiting uh, for approval. We saw from the Productivity Commission just a few weeks ago that the average time it takes to approve a resource project, a mining project in this country, has blown out over the last five years from 700 days to 1,000 days. So we just got to get this right. It now takes, it now takes as long usually to think about whether we should do something, about three years <laughs> and counting, to actually do the thing we're assessing <laughs> that is going to be done. Because usually a mine can be built in much less than three years. That's what's happening with the Adani mine here. So it is just madness. And we don't, we can't, don't have the luxury of affording madness anymore, uh, given the impact of this virus. Well, you say that, uh, Matt, but I mean, we've got so many bans on things that make no environmental sense. You know, we've got bans on fracking in Victoria. Fracking is a safe technology being used around the world, millions of wells. Uh, banned in Victoria and parts of New South Wales and South Australia. We've got bans on nuclear power, also safe. The bans are irrational. And we have crazy global warming laws now to promote expensive and unreliable wind and solar power. I mean, can we afford these green handbrakes any longer, given the disaster that's happening to our economy? Well, I've got a radical idea, Andrew. I think what we need to do uh, now is, uh, is a different approach. Uh, we've had to hibernate the, the business sector, unfortunately, over the past month. Uh, our business sector has gone into a, into a form of hibernation. Uh, as you've said, whether they reheat and re-emerge from that is an open question. Uh, but maybe, maybe, just to, uh, uh, as a radical idea, we should look to hibernate the regulators uh, now. We look to, <laughs> to put them in the deep freeze. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can, uh, if, if, we, if we take them off the front lines and that, that will create the space and opportunity for our private sector to bounce back. I mean, I'm probably a little bit more optimistic in you than our, the, in our ability to, to bounce back if we can crush this pandemic here. There is that opportunity. There is a lot of pent-up demand and, 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 and potential in this nation. Uh, if we can just unlock, um, as you say, take off those handbrakes... Uh, actually, the sky's the limit here because we have been unnecessarily and artificially holding our economy back uh, over the past few, few years in the pre-virus world. If we can take off those handbrakes, uh, we might be surprised how quick we can run. Look, I'm going to go with you that we can bounce back a little faster than perhaps I'm sort of fearing, but that is only if we start releasing these restrictions as in about now. Matt, do you think we've overreacted? Our governments have overreacted to the coronavirus panic. No, I, I don't, Andrew. I, I think we're absolutely right to be safe uh, rather than sorry. Uh, and I oh, we're going to be sorry, all right. A huge amount of uns. Well, I, I still think there's a huge amount of uncertainty about this virus. Uh, uh, you know, we can all, you know, we, we can all pick a country uh, in the, around the world at the moment that 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 might. Uh, uh, suit the narrative we're trying to push, whether it's Sweden or Japan or, or the UK or the US. Uh, but it, it, the virus has had terrible impacts on, on some countries. Uh, 
uh, and maybe maybe some evidence emerging there might be different strains of it. I don't know. Uh, we now all we do know is we've been very very fortunate here in this country that it has not uh, led to the the, to the amount of deaths uh, that we've seen in, in other nations. Uh, whether that's good luck or good management, I'll let others decide. But uh, we've got to count our blessings uh, and make reasonable and sensible decisions going forward about the other contagion that we risk here in the financial sector and the business sector. I completely agree with that. Uh, we, we, we can't separate the two. Uh, the impact on our economy and our business and people's real jobs is real, is a real you one. Got it. And, uh, Pat, uh, you're quite right to make the point that we can all that. look at... You, you're quite right to make the point we can all look at a, a country overseas that suits our narrative. But what my central point is, look at the data in Australia. Because what's happening here is what should cl yep. uh, clue you in as to what you should do here. Matt Canavan, thank you so much for your time. No worries, Andrew. Have a good evening.